Today I will explain, I will demonstrate how to process ECA sounder data in HydroMagic. So uh, let's start. Uh, I will use a data set. You can find the link to that data set uh, in comments for uh, for uh, live stream. Uh, the data set was collected two years ago uh, near Tartu in Estonia. We got the uh, photogrammetry, LiDAR, and Tecca Sounder data to build a, a digital twin of that area. Here is small query, lake, uh, power line, houses, very interesting, very interesting place to collect almost any kinds of data. So a, a Sounder data is here. Here is lake. You can download uh, data uh, using li provided link. Uh, the files you can find here. Uh, not only bathymetric data, but you can find uh, point cloud, uh, bathymetric data exported in CSV format as point cloud and also raw data. If you want to reproduce what I will show you, you will need raw data, this file, and uh, most probably <clears throat> if you will want to use high resolution uh, high resolution uh, orthophoto map as background for processing, you can also download orthophoto here. But please note that you need orthophoto small because Hydromagic uh, bathymetric data processing software is not full scale, scale JS system and it cannot handle huge files. Uh, that file uh, full resolution file has size more than four gigabytes as I remember. So please download Orthophoto small. Uh, I will use Hydromagic. You can download a trial version here, demo version here, to check or try to reproduce what I demonstrate. So let's start. I will start. Uh, uh, I already have raw data in folder on my computer. A raw data consists of four, uh, five NMEA files. Z files are pretty standard format to uh, Z and MIA files are pretty standard to store uh, echo sounder data. Here we can see sentences with coordinates. Also, we can see sentences with depth measurement. And this one as well. So uh, let's start. I need Hydromagic. First step is to create new project. It will uh, dialog window to create new project will pop up automatically or you can click this icon in toolbar. Uh, project name will be tar to demo We need to specify project location. Tar2. And uh, very important, we need to specify uh, map projection. Uh, we can use uh, uh, latitude longitude, specifying, for example, WGS84. But in most cases, you will process data using some projected coordinate system because it is more convenient. And actually, most of uh, customers uh, uh, who order bathymetric data will require output materials in some projected coordinate system. So here for simplicity, I will use UTN zone 35N. Create. And next step is import of raw data. Click, uh, right click here, that area called Project Explorer. Well, click here and import, uh, import data wizard, wizard. Here we need to select NMEA uh, 0183. Next, select folder with our raw data and 
select all NMEA files. Next. Uh, here for NMEA sentence, uh, depending on what we need, we uh, may select different sentences. I will select SDXDR because that sentence uh, stores both high frequency and low frequency uh, data. Uh, echo sounder, what we used uh, in that project was dual frequency with high frequency and low frequency. So the only option to import full data into Hydra Magic is to select SDXDR sentence. Click next and finish. So here we will see track of our raw data uh, measurements. Uh, next step, next step, uh, what I do usually uh, is to download a satellite map to have it as background. Download. Here you can select between different providers. Uh, next, you need to specify boundaries for the piece of Earth map. Click calculate and select uh, that you want that option, calculate map boundaries from raw data files. That means that Hydra Magic will download map around your uh, raw data. Okay, and select file. Map zero one. Click OK. It takes some time, but yep, mapping is downloaded, uh, and we can see that data in right place. Here is our lake, and data inside of lake boundaries. Uh, if you have high resolution or top photo, you can import also uh, your own data. Right click maps and import map. I have it here, open, and uh, I want to copy that map to the project folder. Yes. Uh, very important, very important uh, that Hydra Magic cannot reproject uh, maps on the fly. That means that uh, coordinate system, what you used in the project, and uh, coordinate system for the import uh, for uh, uh, used in the map, what we are trying to import, should be the same. So uh, the only option in reality is that one. Okay. And now we have, we can still see a satellite map and we can see a high resolution map, what we generated using uh, photos taken, taken by drone. And uh, actually, we don't need satellite map anymore. I will just turn it off. Uh, if we will zoom in, we will see some numbers here. And that numbers are depth below transducer. Uh, what it means, it is not depth below water level. I have one picture here. It's a kind of schematic of the drone with echo sounder. Echo sounder is attached to the drone using some rope. And depth below transducer is this one between sensor and the bottom. So numbers, what we see here are uh, depth or distance between a cassander and the bottom. Also a very important, uh, as I mentioned, we use a dual frequency device, which has frequencies, as I remember, 200 kilohertz and 50 kilohertz. 
uh, we can uh, here we can see data i will check yeah for low frequency if if i will clear the flock click ok and we will see different uh, bit different numbers because they are for different frequency bottom was covered by thin layer of sediments and it was a lot of vegetation on the bottom so uh, the, the, there can be should be difference between low frequency values and high frequency we need to understand what we see what we analyze here uh, next uh, so we finish it with data import and next step will be actually data processing very important that in most cases customers uh, and users of the data will need not the depth data they uh, in most cases will need bottom elevation data because depth under the water surface it is something variable it can be very different today after rain tomorrow or when lake is partially drained or fill it with the water if it is technology pond for example in most cases customers require elevation data to process data uh, in uh, in terms of elevation we need to uh, check couple of settings in hydro module we need to click options and select rtk tab here we need to specify antenna uh, height uh, not very uh, not very clear term what it means in the same picture uh, in the same picture antenna height is the distance between face center of uh, GNSS antenna and bottom of a sounder it is uh, uh, num uh, measurement distance number three here it should be measured using measurement tape when the system is fully assembled and configured uh, for system what uh, was used for that survey uh, antenna height or distance between a genesis antenna and bottom of a cassander was 2.37 meters next important settings is joint model because uh, again in most cases uh, customers will require uh, elevations in some particular datum and in uh, again most cases uh, customers prefer to use uh, uh, orthometric height according to some local uh, official joint model Unfortunately, for Estonia, latest version of Joid model is licensed. Uh, I tried to get the license, but uh, it took quite a long time. Uh, I tried to get license uh, too late. So uh, for that uh, demonstration, I will use global model called EGM, Earth Gravity Model. 86 but here you can select different joint models for different uh, areas of the world if you don't see required model here joint model here you can ask uh, hydromagic support or if you purchase it, the license of hydromagic from us you can also ask for jo for, for joint model from us so two important settings separation between antenna and echo sounder and joint model we can start uh, processing of the data in term in hydromagic terms processed data called soundings i have to click by right mouse uh, button uh, to soundings node in project explorer and select from raw data files click next select here uh, first time we have to select start editing from original raw data select all 
click next and we will use a joint model for our processing because we want to get as a result of our processing we want to get elevations according to the earth joint model next we can click here next but if you have uh, sound velocity data we can substitute it here uh, here we can filter our data uh, click here first and very useful we can uh, filter out all measurements made when drone antenna uh, drone gnss receiver was not in full rtk mode that means that we will filter out all measurements with not precise coordinates and not precise elevation also very useful to filter out all depth data which is outside of expected values or outside of the working range of our echo sound so here uh, actually we expected that uh, depth of the lake is not very deep and uh, we i prefer during processing to exclude uh, two short to, to, to shallow measurements because uh, in most cases that uh, some wrong uh, wrong data and also we can uh, filter some uh, measurements using motion data uh, echo sounder what we use has built in uh, tilt and roll sensors so we can filter out all measurements in the points where echo sounder was too far from vertical orientation click apply and next step unfortunately manual cleaning of the data i should click edit and we will see echograms uh, blue plot here is data uh, low frequency data red plot is high frequency data and we can see that uh, low frequency data is more or less consistent high frequency data is high frequency measurements are jumping and up and down and up frequency data has many spikes uh, reason is that uh, that uh, bottom of the lake is covered with vegetation in such situation you cannot trust high resolution high frequency data so first i will clean uh, low frequency data uh, holding right mouse button i will select spikes and click that icon or i can just press delete button on the keyboard of my computer When I deleted obvious spikes, I can apply a filter to the data. I prefer to use mean filter. And you can see that data became more smooth. After that, uh, toggling between frequencies, I can repeat the same for high frequency data. But here I prefer not to spend too much time for that because uh, you can see that measurements are not consistent. And we need to repeat the same for all data files. What we have, we can use a uh, drop down list or we can use uh, arrows here to navigate between uh, data files.
Again, filter. Alternatively, you can draw a line and delete everything below or above that line. Boom. Yeah, high frequency. Yeah, it is not spiked because here we have a many measurements. More or less good. Yeah, and that's all. Click OK. If you need, if if we need, we can also clean uh, data based on the positions of measurements. Click Edit here, and actually approach the same. We need to select. Uh, some areas using right mouse button and click uh, one of the icons. Okay, looks good enough. And here, yeah, uh, there are a lot of additional tools, but you can, you should use them mostly in exceptional cases when something not very good with the data. You can, uh, you need to apply for the latency, uh, or your system uh, was in not RTK mode. You can use PPK data. In most cases, you will not need that advanced uh, functions. Click next. And here uh, it's the last step for the uh, initial data processing. We can generate uh, entries in the soundings in processing data for every depth measurements. But in many cases, uh, especially in case of big projects, uh, it is better to, uh, uh, to, to limit amount of processing data and normally what I do, I generate uh, soundings for every half of second. In most cases, it is more than enough. Finish. And uh, instead of raw data, now we see processed soundings. So please notice that numbers became different. So I will show you raw data again. Here depth is around 2.5 meters, but if we will look at processed data, uh, it is close to 60 because processed data is elevation data using EGM uh, 96 joint. So uh, next step, next step, we will make our map colorful adding palette to display our data for that first uh, first what we need to know it's a range minimum maximum elevation i can click here uh, on any uh, uh, using right mouse button uh, i can click any processed sounding and click select here show echogram uh, font may be too small here, but uh, if you will check process tachogram, we will see that all uh, values uh, are between 57 and 60 meters.
done and uh, uh, we need to specify colors click here this icon in toolbar or you can cl uh, click using right mouse button to the soundings knob and select display options click colors and here we need to create a color set or palette click add Eleva elevations palette close and uh, i previous i prefer to uh, use uh, auto mode to create many color entries here we need to specify minimum depth it is 57 and 60 sorry we uh, i already have right numbers here because i <laughs> yeah actually i run, run that procedure two times be before uh, live stream click ok and we can see auto generated palette ah, very important if we generate palette for elevations we need to select that flag reverse colors we also can generate palette for the depth measurements if our customers want to see depth map not elevation but depth map we will need to use direct not reversed colors okay and okay again and okay again so we can see that uh, our me measurements uh, painted used color according to our palette between close to red or orange and blue in the deepest part next step in processing we will generate elevation map or elevation matrix uh, right click here generate matrix and select soundings what we will include uh, in the matrix or map generation select all okay uh, here we will not uh, first time we will not use boundaries uh, i will demonstrate how to uh, generate depth map map for the entire area and select here uh, what type precise measurement we will use for map or matrix generation here I want to use elevation based on low frequency data because low frequency data is more clean low frequency uh, matrix spacing one meter is quite good value for the small water bodies and we need to specify output file low frequency elevation And click OK. So uh, I will uncheck soundings. Yeah, and we see elevation map or elevation matrix. It doesn't cover entire water body because all, all matrix generated around uh, actual measurements. We di didn't. Uh, collect data close to the brinks because here were quite tall and wide trees and uh, some areas were extremely shallow like here uh, it, it is normal situation for all bathymetric surveys you will have some uncovered areas but we can approx uh, approximate our depth map or ele elevation map in our case to cover entire water body for that we need to create boundary click right click here boundaries node and click draw boundary using mouse clicks 
I will draw boundary covering entire lake. Actually, if you want to have maximum precision uh, and draw boundary exactly uh, where it should be, you can use zoom in, zoom out. and uh, click uh, uh, to any place uh, using right button uh, mouse right button when you finish so uh, automatically uh, will pop up uh, boundary editor and here what we need to do we need to click include the elevation of the boundary in matrix generation and here most tricky uh, uh, moment we need to specify elevation of our boundary uh, and that elevation should be in the same uh, geoid model as uh, we use it to process data question is uh, from what source we can get that magic number first we can when we collect the data uh, we can use uh, RTK receiver uh, to measure exact elevation in uh, uh, of our boundary line. Alternatively, in case of our system, we log uh, flight data in uh, position CSV file. It is specific to our system. And here we log elevation of RTK antenna and we log data from altimeter install it on the drone if you will find here uh, numbers uh, for survey lines when drone was over the water we can check average elevation reported by RTK receiver and average elevation over the surface reported by ultimate. Simple arithmetic operation will give us uh, elevation of water surface in, uh, in terms of ellipsoidal height reported by RTK antenna on the drone. So here difference will be approximately 60 meters, uh, 80 meters, sorry. And I know that difference for that area between, uh, between uh, ellipsoidal height and orthometric height, height according to uh, selected geoid is approximately 20 meters. So elevation of our boundary is 60 meters. And click OK. Uh, I don't know. Can you see the boundary? It is uh, here uh, using uh, dotted green line. Uh, but we can use that line to generate or to regenerate the matrix. Now I will select our boundary and click. OK, again. And we can see that boundary covered almost all the lake except very shallow areas. But yeah, it covers also yeah, shall, shall, shallow areas as well. But we may, to make it colorful, we need to extend palette a bit, 60.20 or something. But doesn't matter. And yeah, actually, that's all. That's all for data processing. We have clean, clean, 
linear data, we have generated a map and uh, the last steps, what we need to do are data export or reports generation and we may actually do very important step called quality control. I will switch to, uh, to, to save our time because we have not so much time left. I will open clean project. To just to show how to do uh, quality control of our data. So it is the absolutely the same data set, uh, the same data, the same uh, processing sequence, but not in Rush. <laughs> so <clears throat> what is the difference? Here I created uh, sections, I will show you. That lines, they are uh, in the same tracks as our raw data or actually soundings. We can see soundings are here and I created uh, sections, sections in terms of Hydra magic. Having sections, we can do a very important step called quality control. Uh, why it is important? It allows to check that our system and our processing workflow will not generate uh, not systematic errors. What I mean, if we will zoom into the data, and compare it, uh, we can see that difference in the measurements taking on the crossed lines are almost the same. And if it is, if we see the same situation on all crossings, that means that our system and uh, our processing sequence generate consistent results. We don't have systematic, non-systematic errors. We can have systematic errors. All our measurements will be shifted to some direction, up, down, left, right. But the errors are systematic. And if you will notice such situation, we can make some corrections. If our system and processing workflow generates not systematic errors, that means that most probably our data is just scrap and we cannot do anything. We cannot use the data. We can compare the measurements by our eyes, zooming in, zoom, uh, zooming out and comparing the numbers in cross sections, uh, in uh, uh, crossings. But Hydra Magic also has function to do the same in systematic way. We need to have sections covering our measurement lines, measurement lines, and also we need to have a check line which cross our regular uh, survey lines. When we have that all in place, we can use function called cross section statistics. Here we may we need to select soundings again and select our sections. Select all and click calculate. We may see that Hydra Magic found uh, eight intersections and calculates difference uh, difference between. Uh, two lines in the intersections. We can see difference here and also we can see some statistics here. 
mean difference, standard deviations, uh, minimum, maximum deviation. And we can select what exact measurements we will uh, use to, uh, uh, to check that our system doesn't have syst uh, non-systematic errors. As we are going to generate all output uh, materials, all our output reports or the data using low frequency elevation, we need to select here the same elevation, low frequency, and we calculate again. We can see that in some intersections, we have difference six centimeters. In some intersections, difference is bigger. We can actually, uh, I would recommend to uh, use, <laughs> uh, for, especially for large products, I will, I recommend to have uh, two monitors or la laptop for and external mo monitor uh, to, to work with Hydra Magic because here, when we in many dialog windows, when we are uh, traveling in between some lines of the data uh, in dialog windows, we can see uh, a corresponding point on the map. Here it's a very small red circle. But <clears throat> also we can check that standard uh, deviation in our data or difference mean is pretty acceptable. This, that's a systematic way to check quality of our data. Uh, and I will quickly touch uh, data export uh, because uh, currently currently we have everything inside of Hydra Magic. In most cases, your customer will not have Hydra Magic. They need report or they need some data which can be imported into JS system or CAD system. First, a uh, very simple and basic option, we can export soundings, uh, mean, meaning uh, clean it, filter it, measurements. File, export, uh, export sounding data. Here <clears throat> we uh, select what we will export all soundings. Uh, what columns or what data we want to see in the exported data. Again, if we are processor data for elevation for low frequency, we have to include elevation uh, column here. And also we can uh, uh, select east and northing and uh, geographical coordinates if customer wants that. Click OK. And we can here we can uh, change projected projection of, of exported data and measurement unit units for the depth or for elevation. Click OK. Data is exported, and we can see what we got eastern eastern uh, northing la, la, longitude latitude daytime and corrected or filtered depth and our elevation uh, next uh, option we can do the same with matrices Uh, we can right click matrix name and select at export matrix data. Here we have a few options for format. Uh, uh, I think most popular option is uh, export uh, our data as point cloud because most of JS and CAD systems allows to uh, uh, can import uh, point clouds. I will click or again we need to specify output file name point cloud. Click OK and yeah. We have point cloud. I can show how it looks in 
cloud compare for example So you just saw point cloud. Actually, it's the same what we can see here. And uh, maybe a last uh, standard or popular request is to provide cross sections. If we have defined sections here, we can generate uh, cross sections using tools, volume calculations, and cross sections. Very simple. Uh, what's more? What's more? Ah, sorry. One more standard output. Uh, volume calculations. Hydra Magic has pretty good functions to calculate volumes. We can calculate volume of the pond, or we can calculate volume of the water in the pond. We we can compare the different uh, different uh, difference between. For example, measurements taken before dredging, after dredging. So very simple. We need to specify a matrix one. If we need to compare two uh, data sets, we can uh, specify matrix two. Click calculate, and Hydra, Hydra Magic will calculate the. Uh, for example, here it should be volume of the water in that lake. Very simple. And uh, of course, we can generate report. 